One of the organizations uh, that we've interviewed over the past, well, 12, 13 years since we've been on the air is Women's Support Services. And uh, there's a lot of water under the bridge or over the dam, as they say, from when we first started these interviews. And today we're going to be speaking to the executive director of Women's Support Services here in Sharon, Betsy Monroe. Betsy, it's nice to speak to you today. Very nice to speak with you as well. Thanks for having the discussion. You know, uh, you look at the at the history of women's support services from where it start, where it began, and to where it is now, and I'm always marveled. Uh, I look at when we first planned this radio station almost 15 years ago, uh, our thoughts and plans and what we had ideas, uh, and uh, 15 years later, uh, most of those plans have been made up on the fly because we were wrong about what we expected. It's the same thing for women's support services. You started off on a rather, I think, strict limited basis, but you really have become a pusher of rights for, for, for people in general, not just women. Uh, our mission really is to um, challenge attitudes and beliefs to end interpersonal violence, relationship violence. And to do that, we really have to be devoted to equity and making sure that people have the opportunities to live into their full selves. So there's a lot of intersections with uh, relationship violence and other equity and, and diversity issues. I just like the way you've expanded uh, to include uh, like uh, uh, children, uh, students, uh, in, in, in your umbrella of services that you offer through the various agencies that we have around here. But one of the things I've been wondering about, we'll talk about uh, an incredible mar- milestone, which is the 40th anniversary uh, of Women's Support Services in just a moment. But uh, how has the pandemic affected Women's Support Services in the beginning, during it, and now as, it, as we try to come out of this pandemic? Sure. Like, like everybody else, um we had to learn how to work from home. Uh, so our staff, when, when the state shut down, they all started working remotely. And so we really were very creative about making sure that our services weren't interrupted. And so we got creative about how we reached out to clients, how we responded to the hotline, and uh, were able to continue our services without interruption, even though we weren't physically located in an office during those early days of the pandemic. Uh- it wasn't the ideal way to do it. Um, but we were really proud that we were able to still be there for the clients that needed us. And then for schools, we went remote like they did. So we delivered our education programs in our schools via Zoom or Google Meets or whatever the school was using. You know, I think I think we all have learned uh, from this pandemic. Uh, we've done certain things that we found out, hey, they kind of work. Uh, and I think we've all learned things and probably improved the way we service the public in general over over the course of uh, the intro, the retrospective look at what we do and how we can do it better. I think that's true for us. We we were creative and innovative, and some of those things will continue, and some of those things will look forward to retiring. But I think that the creativity that was required of all of us uh, meant that we could really innovate in ways that the pandemic probably wouldn't have brought to us. So if there's a little silver lining, maybe that's it. All right. Now, we have a, an event coming up in December uh, where the uh, WHDDA and we'll celebrate 35 years uh, on the air. And you now, let's talk about your 40th anniversary. When you start talking about numbers like 35, 40 uh, years, uh, let's talk a little bit about your anniversary and, and how you are celebrating it and how you are interacting with the community with it. Yeah, we're planning a real community celebration. We're inviting everybody to that. Um, we're very excited to greet people on Sunday, September 26th at the Grove in Lakeville um, from 3 to 5, a very family-friendly event with uh, games and food uh, free to the public. We just want to say thank you for all the incredible support that Women's Support Services has gotten over the years. Uh, we have a lot of community partners who continue to encourage us and give us the strength and motivation to go on. And we just want to celebrate and say thank you. So let's talk about that event. Uh, what is actually going to happen at that event at uh, the time and stuff like that? And is it is it free of charge? Uh, it is totally free of charge. There will be games for children. There will be food trucks. There will be music. Uh, a little bit of, you know, people speaking to say thank you. But mostly it's really about just enjoying each other's company and uh, celebrating what we've accomplished in 40 years. You know, I look back at uh, 40 years uh, and setting up uh, Women's Support Services 40 years ago in, in, here in, 
and Sharon, forty years is a long time, and there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of things, and there's a lot of things that have changed, and attitudes have changed. And I think how early uh, that women support services actually started serving our area. Uh, the area has changed a great deal, and I think uh, through a lot of the work uh, that you have done, uh, have opened the eyes to men and women and educators and employers uh, throughout our area. Thank you. That is our, our mission. We really uh, appreciate and believe that partnered together with a community, we're better than when we're alone. And I think that's one of the real delights of this area. Everyone who lives here knows that that being with each other and for each other is important. We're rural, so we have to depend on each other. So in the good times, we can celebrate. In the bad times, we can come together and make things better. And that's one of the real um, delights of being in this area, knowing that we have that kind of support. I think it's excellent also that uh, you yourself uh, have you're a native of Northwest Connecticut, and so uh, you, you fit into the job and you know the area, you live in the area, and I think that that also helps, I think, in, in the direction that you're taking. Thank you. I love this area. Um, it was great to come home after being away for 20 years. You know, it was the same because <laughs> I've been doing this for 50 years, but 50 years ago uh, I came back after uh, uh, my initial career in broadcasting and managed to – I always wanted to come back and, and start a radio station in this area. And you know what? No truer words have been said. It's been so great to come back to this area and be in this area uh, and and be part of the amazing energy that this area has because it does really have a lot of energy that affects a lot of different organizations that affect all the people that live here. It, it does, and uh, I feel really – privileged to be part of the communities of here. And, you, and you've got quite a, 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 a problem because you, you have to keep doing what you're doing. Uh, do you still look for volunteers to work for the 24-hour hotline uh, and, and, and to support and stuff like that? We do look to volunteers to, to help support. Uh, we're always looking for people who can uh, drive clients someplace or help us in other ways. Our hotline is now staffed with paid per diems, so we don't put volunteers on the hotline anymore, but there are plenty of other places for volunteers to, to help us out. Uh, to volunteer, though, you do need to go through 20 hours of training, certification training. That's a requirement by law. And uh, when you go through that training, you learn a lot about the dynamics and the attitudes and the beliefs that feed into uh, the work that we're trying to prevent, that interpersonal violence. Um, but we're always looking for volunteers, and our volunteers are the backbone of who we are and what we do. Well, I just think that uh, your organization has has grown and uh, really interacted with this area and is now uh, involved in so many aspects uh, of abuse that uh, you're to be congratulated. And once again, let's go over the, the details on your 40th anniversary uh, celebration. Yes. Thank you, Marshall. Yes, we're looking to greet the community on Sunday. September 26th, 3 to 5, at the Grove in Lakeville. And again, there'll be games for the kids, there'll be food trucks, there'll be music, and uh, a lot of good cheer and and a lot of celebration to thank everyone for their incredible support and encouragement. Well, once again, uh, continue the great the great work. We'd love to check in with you on a quarterly basis to just to see how you're doing and to, and to see the effect of change that you've really brought to this area. And I think one of the major things that I I think have come out of 40 years of having women support services is that the youth get involved in much 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 earlier, and their understanding of domestic violence is greatly enhanced by the programs that go into the schools. Thank you. We have really grown that area of our programming, and so we are now in every single school in Region 1, um, and we're in a number of the private schools in the area helping youth determine how to create and sustain really healthy relationships. So we're, we're proud of that growth in our agency. Well, once again, thanks for joining us this morning, uh, Betsy, and more success in the future, and uh, hope to see you at that 40th anniversary celebration. Thank you so much, Marshall. Thank you for getting our word out. We really appreciate the work you do at the radio station and uh, appreciate our partnership as well.